Welcome back to For the Love of Grilling. Today we are trying something new. Join me as we try and learn together. Today I'll be trying something I learned from a friend, Dawi Pretorius, a stuffed and rolled 5 kilogram rump roast meal stuffed with all kinds of wonderful goodness. Join me, let's try this, let's learn, let's go. Kicking off with this magnificent 5 kilogram piece of meat. We are cutting into thinnish slices against the grain of the meat. And this is basically, well, not rocket science. You just continue to cut thinnish slices until there's no more meat to cut. So please let me continue to bore you during the next couple of minutes as I'm slicing meat into slices. <laughs> now this process, though tedious, will create a new pile of meat left or right depends on yourself but this is where the magic starts to happen and this is where the fun starts to happen actually okay perhaps uh, magic is an overstatement but fun is definitely not we are going to take the heap of meat and we're going to stack it like leaf it over each other and we create a long rump train i suppose you call it just stack it one with the other just barely overlapping one piece to the other and make sure you've got enough table or countertop for this I had to turn the camera sideways to make it fit and the, the, the workbench as well <laughs> now before we can continue we need to grab some butter about 150 grams and we're going to be adding about two teaspoons of a custom spice mix and three teaspoons of crushed garlic now this spice mix was purchased at a fair or local market and the ingredients is cloves chili nutmeg mace basil thyme bay leaves and salt which if you could smell it i almost purchased her entire stock it is absolutely divine to say the least now this butter is not playing ball it is uh, quite hectic hectically hectically hard and i'm trying to squash it all but unfortunately even though i left it out for quite a while it uh, it seems to be uh nah let's skip forward a bit shall we now to make a long mixing story quite short continue to mix and mash it all together quite well because we will be using this butter in the most awesome way possible so the longer you mix it the more it'll become malleable and the more spreadable it'll be so mix 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 squash 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 and continue repeat repeat continue okie dokie now grab a fork and apply liberally apply as needed the butter to the meats continue to apply use a fork use a spatula just spread the butter okay warp speed here we go once the butter is spread evenly throughout and we've got all little nooks and crannies covered with butter we're going to be adding about two to three hundred grams worth of cheddar and two to three hundred grams worth of mozzarella now please note you can add as much or as little or as whichever cheese you want to i've actually been contemplating trying a feta on a silver side um you know that's the whole fun idea of this is that you can experiment and try new things and see what works and what doesn't work so apply cheddar apply mozzarella copious amounts or if you would like to use less than do so but add more i like more as you can see i kept on adding okay okay don't judge me i added way too much cheese but now i'm con you know correcting the issue by adding more spice because why not it smells fantastic this is the most divine smelling combination of spices and leaves and cloves and chili and nutmeg and mace oh okay we all knew this was coming it is called a roll after all we're going to take the meat carefully and roll it all the pieces into twining and lacing together into a nicely tight packed meat roll 
and as you can see just hold the bottom section carefully and guide it over and continue to roll until you run out of a meat train to continue just rolling 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 and of course you've got to get those uh, extra pieces that falls off grab a little extra pieces of cheese put it on top don't waste the cheese <laughs> Okay, once everything is rolled up and tied together, well, rolled and stuck together, we're going to need something more than love and passion to keep all this meat together. So, tie it up and grab some twine. And then once done, just trim off the little edges there so it doesn't get in the way while you're roasting this monstrosity on the fire. Okay, nicely trimmed and tied up and ready to go. Next, we're going to be placing this into a casserole and just covering it in uh, some olive oil. Now this is, well, I suppose for taste, but mostly for the rub to stick to the outside of this meat. Just continue, roll it over. What you do on the one side, always do on the other side, quite important. Again, we're going to be adding copious amounts of uh, the mixture, just to remind you, it's cloves, chili, nutmeg, mace, basil, thyme, bay leaves and salt, and you really have to get a lot of it on there, because this is going to be inside a weaver for a couple of hours. So make sure you get it well and truly covered. One side, again, do on the other side, repeat, roll over, continue etc 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 Now once you have spiced all you can spice, it is time to put this in a casserole and let it rest for about an hour or more. While the meat is resting, we are going to be adding some vegetables and preparing some vegetables on the side. This is just a simple straightforward mushrooms, white onions, some sweet potatoes and some carrot chopped. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. We're going to be adding some spices, some salt, some pepper, and all that is necessary. Nothing a lot, really. I've, I've got, I found this awesome curry mixture. Um, it's a 13-in-1 curry. It doesn't, it's not really hot. It's slightly spicy, but it is divine in flavor. And uh, I decided to try this in some vegetables. And boy, oh boy, was it a hit. Just... Add two to three, I don't know what, teaspoons, tablespoons, whatever fits your fancy. Okay, the vegetables are there for but two reasons. First of all, taste, which I love vegetables. And, uh, but basically adding some spices and whatever is not really the purpose. That's, what, that's not where the flavor comes from. The flavor comes from the meat that drips onto the food and the vegetables itself. And it, in my humble opinion, it alters your DNA. It tastes divine. So add your, your spices to taste and uh, let's see what's gonna happen next. Okay, vegetables done. Meat resting. Prepare Weber. Light fire. Ooh, fire. Mmm, nice and toasty. Time to transfer the coals 
into the containers which we've placed on the side of the weaver kettle. Just be careful, it is quite hot. Move them to the side and make some space for our vegetable slash catch tray flavor explosion. Okay, before we give it, uh, we add the grit, we're just going to give it a quick stir and just move the veggies around, making sure that uh, there's not too many soft vegetables touching the side of the grilling or roasting pan. Once you're happy, grab the grit and place it over the vegetables and onto the fire. Now with any lesser piece of meat, I would have given the vegetables about a 45 minute to half an hour, to an hour, apologies, head start, but Seeing that we're grilling this magnificent 5 kilogram roast, I'm just going to place it immediately. It's going to be on there for a couple of hours anyway. Now, just note that I'm placing the meat over the vegetables and uh, making sure that it drips into the vegetable or the roasting pan below. Now, we're going to be roasting this for about an hour before we check it again. And um, I'm placing the thermostat in between the coals wiping it obsessive compulsive much obsessive compulsive and uh, opening the vents to full because I would like to run high heat as possible as we are cooking on indirect heat okay this is one hour later the grill is running at about 150 degrees Celsius and uh, I've got the thermostat positioned in on the indirect section just giving the coals a bit of a shake and uh, just livening them up a little and uh, as you can see oh my word it smells better than words can describe it is a smell that man cannot put into words basically so for some moisture I'm adding a beer you can add any beer doesn't really matter not a lot this is a high fat low carb meals this will not really screw up your carb rating just add one or two coals on each side, maybe three or four, depending on how much you want. But the grill is running a little bit on the light side, so I'm just adding one or two, maybe three or four pieces of charcoal, some high quality hardwood charcoal. And now we're going to be closing the lid and giving it another hour. It is one hour later, grill still running on 150 degrees Celsius and time to check the temperature. Still a little while to go. I'm aiming here for about 135, a medium rare. Whoops, uh, closed it, but forgot to add uh, some more moisture. Just gonna add some more beer, just to prevent it from drying out as I'm drying the, as I'm running the uh, Weaver quite hot. Just add it and close the lid for another hour. 45 minutes later, the sun is gone, it is now dark, let's check it out, it's about 133, 134. Time for this majestic piece of meat to come off the grill, place it in a casserole, now some people use foil, I use a casserole, and we're just going to let the meat rest for about 20 to 25 minutes, and time for those vegetables, take a look. Now, while we're organizing some light, as we were unprepared for the darkness, these vegetables have been, how can I put this, assuming, acquiring the taste of all the juices that dripped from the meat on top. And the smell, again, the aroma is magnificent, divine, superb. The vegetables are ready, they smell fantastic. Remember we added those the curry, we added the extra spices with the meat, the butter, the cheese juices, everything in there and it is awesome. Let's grab everything, it's ready to come out and uh, let's take everything inside. Juju, dinner is gonna be divine. Okay, this meat has been resting for about 20 to 25 minutes and uh, you can see all the juices has returned, some has come out, let's grab it and uh, let's show you what this meat looks like on the inside. Oh my word, 
Now, I'm just going to cut it in the middle there so you can quickly get a nice look. Now, we were going for a medium to rare to medium max. And this is what I'm hoping we've achieved in this uh, exercise. Just look at the cheese melted, the garlic. Oh my word, we've achieved, I think in my humble opinion, perfection. Just look at it. Look at that meat. I'm going to carve it a bit and it is nice, it is juicy, it smells fantastic. Oh, you have got to give this a try. You've got to give it a try. It is something that I saw once and I just had to try this myself. Now, usually we do a gammon or a chicken or two chickens or a pork shoulder or something similar on the weaver. But this is my first rump, not on gas, but on charcoal. So just take a look at it. We're going to do a flyby. No drones involved and no drones were harmed in the making of this. Note that this is quite an awkward flyby and as we're doing it by hand and I've got a friend, old Darby, the same person I mentioned earlier that showed me how to do this. He's the one doing the camera work at the moment and we're just adjusting the light a bit so you can get a better view, moving the LED lights away and there you can get a perfect view of the inside of this rolled rump roast. Now I mentioned a meal earlier. I've also steamed some vegetables and I have uh, the vegetables which we prepared in the Weber, of course. Okay, as promised, here is the final, final, final product. I can't call it a product, it's a meal. It is divine. Look at those vegetables. Of course, Brussels sprouts, my favorite. I love summery asparagus, but the meat. My mouth is watering just watching this because I've actually tasted it. Now you have to try this. You have to have to try this. That's the purpose of this whole channel is to try new and wonderful things. Not knowing how they'll come out, but this was worth it. Definitely. Well, I've got some, while I've got some photographs running in the background, I would like to thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me in learning and trying new things every day. I would like to wish you a prosperous and a happy and a blessed 2019. And uh, wherever you go, whatever you do, go with God, grill on. Goodbye.